Yeah, we are. Uh, I see it. On on Twitter, we are. Yeah. Uh, Check the Twitters. I see the Twitter. There it is. I see. There we are. Wait. Retweeting. Wait, I. And I then it. closing the browser. Hello, Twitter people. Hey. If you're there. There it is. We are getting set up. Periscope. Oh, yep. We're good on uh, the tubes of you. Oh, wow. It started raining. Oh, is it raining? Oh. Yeah, the mountains just disappeared. <laughs> and that's not smoke from the fire. That's not smoke this nope. time. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> uh, all right. It looks like we're solid. Solid. <clears throat> What episode number is this? 632. Uh, oh, we got uh, got people filtering in. Hello, people filtering in. We got in. Jesus asking about Tim Cook's speech. Dead Sea Genesis. What, what speech? What speech? I don't know. He said, what do you think about Tim Cook's speech, positive or negative? He what, the, the school the, thing? The Courage Against Hate Award thing. Not oh think, yes, oh, yeah, he, the uh, hate speech yeah. one. Yes, yeah. That he and yeah, uh, he mentioned hate speech and stuff, and yeah. Well, this will this will factor in nicely. Okay. Uh, and real quick, Jason, can you uh now tilt the camera down a little bit, a little less headroom. Less headroom. There we go. Cool. Perfect. Okay. All right. Uh, I think we are ready to go. All right. Let me make one note. <laughs> Oh, and we already have a hot take from DJ Dean saying Tim Cook will be the downfall of Apple. Well, we're going we're going to get to that, DJ. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> all right, ready? Yep. Welcome to the Macworld Podcast. I'm Leif Johnson. This is Macworld Podcast 632. Over on the remote, we have Michael Simon, we have Jason Cross, and we Hello. have the temporary most important man in the room, who is Adam <laughs> Patrick Murray, sitting in for Dan Masaoka, who is currently out. I don't Rome. know what I'm doing here. I'm just hitting buttons. I hope people are seeing it and hearing it. So. It is very it's very true. Like if you see that little window up in the right hand corner, that's because he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> nope, don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I, I he get... uses PCs. And Android phones. So sorry. Yeah, I, I get paid by PC World, not Mac World, so I'm, I'm hijacking this to uh, mess it up. So, so you know, this is kind of a slow week. It's December and everything like that. As a result, uh, you know, we are having hot takes this week, and that's why we brought in this guy who normally works with Androids and PCs because this will be a particularly hot time. Oh to do no, this. I'm not allowed to talk. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, but the most important product of the month was released this morning, Leif. You you're you're missing out on Apple. Uh, clear iPhone 10R case. That's right. That everyone yes. has been waiting for. Yes. Yeah, so if you have an iPhone 10R, you can now get the only case for it. It's a clear one, and Apple is selling it for how much, Mike? It is 39 freaking dollars <laughs> <laughs> for nothing. Woo. You don't get an, uh, an embossed Apple logo on the back. You don't get a nice color. There's nothing on the bumper. It's just a clear, simple. <laughs> case well does it have the uh, does it have the apple logo on it at least it does no, not it does what? Not. clear yes. so you can see you what? can see the oh, apple logo okay. through it all right, all right. Clear, i guess but yeah. it's sad There's if they don't nothing. have one that just like perfectly aligns with the one on the actual phone because that would be cool because this Weird. one does Let's, yeah this is yeah if you want to buy a clear case there are lots of alternatives out there for way less than 39 dollars and it's it's sad that this comes after you know that basically disastrous uh you know in a note where they were talking, you know, people were worried about, oh, it really is true that Apple is just kind of marking up stuff too much and it's unsustainable. So now we get a $40 clear case, which... Yeah, uh, it's it's been a rough couple of weeks for Apple. <laughs> and uh, DC147 on YouTube says uh, the case is more expensive in the UK. It's 45 pounds. Oh, uh, see, yeah. even even more. Yeah. I mean, geez, see, yeah. that, that's, that, that's US pricing, the, the 39. Yes. Yep. Yikes. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Uh, also, we're still running an iPad Pro giveaway, correct? Yeah, I was trying uh, to get to that, oh, okay. Mr. Yeah. Morrison Important Man in the room. But we kept getting <laughs> takes and everything else. Yeah. yeah. So, just as a reminder, we are currently in our second week of an iPad Pro giveaway, and we are working with AnyTrans. They're you know, a data management tool, data migration tool that offers a lot more options than Apple's own option does. If you want to you know, bring your data over from like an Android device or you want to bring it from 
from an old iPad to your new iPad Pro. But this is a 64 uh, gigabyte, 11 inch iPad Pro, cool, cool device. Um, you know, I actually like it and did a re did a review on it on a larger 12.9 inch model. This one does not come with the Apple Pencil 2. It does not come with the the Folio keyboard, but it's still an impressive device. Normally it costs $7.99, and uh, and you can get it for us. You just go up to our page, uh, you sign up through the widget. Um, you'll see it at the top of the page, you know, along with the little bar at the top, and uh, you enter, you su subscribe to one of our channels like Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and you get a chance to win. But because we all love you as Macworld <laughs> listeners, uh, we have you know a special code that you can also enter for an uh, um, for an extra chance. And in honor of our normal host who is currently not here, that code is Wolverine. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, also, I realized uh, we never explicitly stated in the in the copy, but it's new. Yes, you know, because I noticed like the photo is of it out of the box, and I was like, I wonder if anyone thinks it's that not it's... the one Leif reviewed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like, oh, get the one the Leif reviewed. No, this is brand new. This is in the package. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the, I never actually saw that. You know, normally when we have a, something to give away, I show it off on here. But you never actually gave me the box, so yeah, yeah, I'd yeah. take a cool photo. Of it. But <laughs> yeah, yes, it is box, brand new. Yes. Shrink wrapped everything. Yes, it's wrapped. It has never been opened, and so yes, it's just like going into the <laughs> Apple Store, getting it. it. Actually, came from Rowan right here in San Francisco. And I believe people have until next week to enter. Yes, right? they do. Yes, and it ends yep. at Wednesday, December twelfth at nine o'clock a.m. Pacific. That's a couple hour. That's an hour before our uh, podcast here. And I just want to say, if you sign up for this, please, when it ends, check your uh, check your spam folder because you know we've had people. All, who all have, of MacWorld's email go into people's spam because <laughs> <laughs> right? we've had people who have won wonderful things and we have not been able to send them to it. Like that eGPU, it is still standing under underneath my desk and uh, <laughs> it's really big i would really like it to go bye bye so ha has anyone actually claimed the prize that we've given away <laughs> <laughs> yes yes the the, the first uh, the, the cases uh, that the we cases? gave away we ah, had five yeah. of those, those and all five yeah, of them cool responded cases. immediately it was yeah. amazing they're good cases yes they're good cases so uh but yeah, let's so let's go ahead and jump in. Let's so do it. we have hot takes. We got four of them. Uh, you know, you feel free to chip in. You know, talk to Adam here, and he'll tell us. But uh, we have four that we asked yesterday. So this first one is from Kr or Rafalco eighty one on Twitter. He asked. Who replaces Tim Cook? I know it won't happen soon, but sooner or later the sales number will start to push Apple to do something. They still sell a lot, but it doesn't take a company like Apple to panic. It's happened before. He also asked an entirely different question, what replaces the iPhone? But first, let's get on who replaces Tim Cook. And, uh, you know... Let's see here. I will. I will say. You know, this has been talking for a while. In October of last year, when he was opening the Chicago store, Tim Cook says that he sees his role as CEO as being able to prepare as many people, in, you know, to fulfill his role as they can. And uh, so, you know, he'll give that decision, and then after that, the board will make a decision. It was interesting at the time. Angela Arentz was sitting right next to him. She's kind of like the chief of retail, and uh, so you know that prompted people to say, "What well, you know? Could it be Angela?" Um, I just want to say before everybody else opts in, I don't know if that'd be necessarily a good idea, Angela. Yeah. Yeah, Angela was, I'm pretty sure, the one responsible for trying to make the Apple Watch, you know, like this grand $10,000, you know, luxury brand. And that didn't work out too hot. Uh, well, she she comes from uh, Burberry. Burberry. So she, that's, mm. that uh, luxury and, and, and uh, that type of stuff is in her blood. Yeah. I think she's done a great job with Apple Retail, however. Yes. Sure. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, I don't fault her for trying something outlandish. Mm -hmm. I credit them for knowing immediately it didn't work and not pushing it to Apple Watch uh, Series 3 and 4 and everything else. You know, they tried it, didn't work, and they stopped it. Yes. Uh, I, think she, I think she's, she's, done a, she's done a great job. To, to clarify, uh, Tim has not resigned. We're not announcing <laughs> that news. No. Uh, somebody's confused in the chat. Uh, we're, we're just saying, you know, if it happens, and, when it happens. And the, nobody's going to replace him because of the current stock right. oh, absolutely right. not. like yeah. ev you know amazon's down 25 percent. like everybody except yeah. for some reason microsoft people like to is punch apple flat <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah people you know but it's it's not they're still making money hand over fist well there's they're less doing... orders of the iphone 10s man they had to to reproduce the we, iphone 10 we don't, we don't yeah, know that was we don't know we'll never know we'll actually. never know yes <laughs> um but <laughs> that that, that yeah, number was was just in japan and i'm not sure is it proof? Is it a fact that they started reproducing the iPhone 10? I don't think so. I don't think so. 
Yeah, that was a that was a rumor about about Japan saying that they were not selling and they were going to reintroduce that, but I don't think that actually came yeah. to fruition. Yeah. Um, we have we'd have no idea how well iPhones yeah, will continue we to sell, but they've got a, such a big services business growing and all this stuff in the pipeline. Like, I don't think the board is unhappy with Tim Cook. Not in the slightest. It's uh, got ridiculously rich while he has been CEO. Yeah, and, he's, you know, yeah. he's done a great job totally. with that stuff. Um, you know, t- Tim Cook was was handpicked by Steve Jobs, mm-hmm. and I think he was you know pretty prescient in the way he picked him. He didn't mm-hmm. want someone that would trying to replicate what Steve Jobs was. He knew Tim Cook was basically the 180 degree polar opposite of what Steve Jobs Definitely. is. Yeah, he's not a he's not an innovative product guy. He's a he's a supply line guy. He knows mm-hmm. how to you know take what they have, market it and sell it, and 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 do things from the operational standpoint. And yeah, in that an regard, as you guys guy, say, yeah. they they've done fantastic. I think now, he is. He's somewhat a product guy. He's not a product guy the way Steve Jobs is. Not, Steve Jobs that, is practically on I, yeah. marketing. Right. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, right. But he was, but he was under Tim together. Cook's watch. We've got uh, under his, you know, his tenure, his, his tenure. Perfect mm-hmm. word. Thank you. We have, we, we've got an Apple watch, which is a fantastic product and still light years ahead of whatever's out there. Got AirPods, we've gotten HomePod, cool. which, you know, right. We've gotten AirPods, which are also mm-hmm. changing the industry. Now we, we see reports that Amazon and Google are going to jump on that bandwagon and a bunch of other companies already have. Mm-hmm. And we've gotten HomePod, which, as much as we like to make fun of it, it's a it's a, you know it's a good product for what it is for what a it is. for a high end high fidelity smart speaker. It's mm-hmm. the best in its class. It's quite beautiful yeah. too. It's not selling well. That's a, it's got Siri yeah. problems, is what it has. But it, yes, it has a lot of problems. It also, there's <laughs> a lot of competition. That's a, that's a lot cheaper, and people yes. aren't necessarily looking for it. And that, that is a device Steve, Steve where I Jobs think the iPod really is Hi-Fi had the same problem. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. it's not perfect either. Yeah, that was the exact same about all those Steve Jobs Jobs duds. (laughs) That's one reason I want to say, too, is uh, the operations bit. That's why a lot of people think that maybe Jeff Williams, because he's currently the position that uh, Cook himself was in before, you know, Cook took over. So, yeah, he was Uh, the. I can tell you, it won't be Johnny Ive. It won't be Phil Schiller. It won't be Eddie (laughs) Q. It's not going to be one of these high profile guys. We know uh, that, that was, probably not. Probably not Frederick. Yeah, that's what I was just about to say. What are you trying to say? Uh, guy. Over over on YouTube, Cruz and Reed, <laughs> or I don't know how to say his name. Cruz and Red, I don't know. Uh, said Johnny Ive is the obvious choice. Uh, but then DC one four seven is asking, what kind of CEO does the panel think Apple needs to move them forward? I think I actually. I actually think Craig Frederick would not necessarily be a terrible choice because yes. Apple has going way back to Jobs heyday uh um thought of itself as a software company Mm -hmm. as software being the most important thing and it 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 vertically integrates its software and hardware yes but it treats itself like a software company and all of its hardware is made to enable things they want to do in software and being the software guy um fits with that worldview and he's also charming and dynamic and you know he he has a great great stage presence and all that all that all that great stuff (laughs) he knows how to talk about product it from a like what you what this does for you Mm -hmm. perspective and and stuff um yeah he's not a bad choice the only i mean i what i don't want to see is apple to panic like they did in the 80s and start hiring people that are hot from other industries and bringing them in and changing things and i don't think that's i don't think there's a risk of that happening but if the stock keeps dropping, let's say it drops another ten percent, and then their first quarter isn't so hot, and it drops another five or ten percent, you know, they might the board might start getting antsy, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that's the one thing that they really just shouldn't do. Let Tim Cook do his thing, let Apple, you know, continue doing what Apple does. I mean, they have a great product line and they have a great customer base, and this is yeah. a bump in the road. It's it's a big bump in the road, but it's a let's bump see in the what road. the next next yeah. let's see what the Mac Pro is the next totally. uh, iMac. Yes. Let's see what their TV service how that shakes out. And yeah, there's a lot of stuff on the horizon that could. They have a Apple. lot of runway. They have more money than they know what Tons. to do with. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Cruz and Reed uh, uh, chimed back in and said the you know the, they think it's Johnny Ive because they went supply side after Jobs. Uh, and now they, they need to go back to a visionary. I don't think it will be he would be the, the CEO. No, I, I I do worry about who will replace Johnny Ive, but I don't think uh, that's you know, a good question. Yeah, yeah, when it comes down to actual design, because if he left or anything, that would be devastating for Apple. And I don't, you know, because the, he is so much considered, 
you know, part of it. But th this is going to factor I mean, he's, into something. He's going to leave at some point. I don't know if it's devastating. Presumably, he has a whole team of people that he's training in his vision and likeness. I think so. I can't, imo I can't imagine. Investors that it would be really devastating. It, it would be, you know, it would be certainly a loss. Uh huh. Yeah, but I mean, the Especially biggest thing is I don't suddenly. think Johnny yes. I wants the damn job. I don't think he he wouldn't take it if they gave it to him. Well, yeah, has, no. hasn't he tried to get out already? Or there's been rumors. Yeah. Yeah. There was, but he, he, he keeps saying rumors, and he keeps saying, "No, I love where I am. I have challenges every day. I'm I'm not that he has a yeah, lot of stuff he, to do." Yeah. yeah. Whenever he gives an interview in one of these high fluting marketing uh, uh, engineering magazines, he always seems to love what he does. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, and and I think he really does. But you know, I don't. Yeah, you know, he's too much well of an, an artist basically to be ceo that would you know it's kind of yeah he's not that guy yes I, yeah he i don't think the, the the sort of scale of global business that they do and all the stuff they have to worry about just isn't his forte that's mm -hmm. just not and i don't he's, think he wants to bother a, himself with it definitely not he's he's, he's not a, a visionary ceo like the way steve jobs was it's a, it's a different type of vision they have Mm -hmm. They worked fantastic together because Johnny I brought to the table something that Steve Jobs, you know, he 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 bought into and he liked. On his own, it's he's a, he's a different guy, and running a company right. for it's a completely different person. So mm -hmm. this leads in nicely to one of our other hot takes. Uh, Wait what, one second. What was the other part of that? There, there oh, there what, what follows, follows the comes, iPhone? What comes after the, what comes after oh, the iPhone? Yeah. Yeah, That's you know, like a three-hour show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I think the idea Maybe behind it is Apple need, is. you know, Apple has leaned so much on the iPhone. They need another major device, you know, that you know, basically follows after that, that becomes Apple's thing. And I mean, let's not knows? forget the Mac was like 30 years before something came along. Yes. So exactly. we could have a long road before the iPhone gets quote unquote replaced. And there's plenty yeah. of things you can still do with a device yes. like this. Short term services is it's going to be such a bigger part of the pie that it's not going to be like, what's the one thing Apple hangs its hat on now? Now it's going to be like Apple sells a bunch of stuff and everything's a, a decent sized piece of the pie. Yeah. Well, Long term, and especially maybe everything... whatever they do with AR, whatever the yeah, AR headset glasses is. Glasses or whatever it is. Well, especially yeah, whatever. everything integrates uh, into, you know, into itself. You know, it's, it's like you got home yeah. stuff, you know, you have the smartphones, you have car stuff, you have, you know, laptops. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it, you know, it's kind of a, a big ecosystem. I think it's more expanding that ecosystem than like yep. creating a yep. whole new product that's just going to revolutionize a new ecosystem. Right. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Ex expanding what it does and, and, and how it interacts with the rest of the things in your life. Yeah. You know, actually, I, I was, uh, I was arguing with uh, my PC World uh, uh, co-worker, uh, Gordon, about uh, smart home stuff, and he thinks, you know, Apple should just get out, and I actually think Apple should should keep going with it uh, because I, I like competition in the marketplace, yeah, and, and I, I want to see what they do. But, yeah, what, what, is, what does everyone uh, on this side think? I'm too poor for a smart home, so I can't ever, <laughs> you know, I can't ever get too excited about that. And, you know, and I What's do... The... Go ahead. No, oh, I'm sorry, Leif. I thought you were done. Carry on. No, yeah, I want to hear what you say. I was going to ask what the exact question was. I didn't understand the question. Uh, like, sh should they should they continue in expanding their smart home offerings, or should they just get out of the smart home altogether? What smart home offerings? Well, exactly. like home I mean, pod? right right now they have a home, home pod, pod, which is a speaker thing, but they they could get something with a, a display like the Google Home Hub. They can get into sure. to light bulbs and smart locks yeah. and you know all I that kind of stuff. I don't think Apple should produce a lot of that stuff. I think. The way HomeKit works is really good, but yes. it doesn't work with enough stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, they need, and it's because HomeKit has the limited set number of domains that, and that's why it works so good. Is you don't have to keep telling it to tell this other service, to tell this other product to do this thing. You just say something right. natural, and and something happens. So they just need to expand the domains that HomeKit works in, and make it easier for people who make smart home products to incorporate. They've already done some of that by removing the sort of hardware requirement. You mm -hmm. used to have to have this encryption hardware requirement in there and they've made it this software offline thing. Well, but, but it seems counterintuitive to what Apple usually does, right? They usually say, hey, mm -hmm. you know what? Uh, I mean, they could have said, uh, you know, Here, here's how you make an iPhone. Everyone else go make one. And they're like, no, actually, we're going to make one. Uh, right. This is how we do it. And we're, and we're going to close it. It seems weird yeah. for Apple not to have like a smart display and be like, well, this is ours, you know, and possibly a smart display, a Siri display if Siri gets really great would be like the limit of that. But all this other stuff, locks and lights yeah. and garage door openers and all this other like smart home stuff. I don't think Apple ever wants to or will be in that space. I think they just need to 
do a much better job of supporting that space mm -hmm. with HomeKit. And Agreed. then they make the they make the hub pieces that tie it together, whether that's HomePod, Apple TV is a hub, your iPad's a hub, whatever, you know. <laughs> and yeah, let's not forget that HomePod isn't marketed as a smart speaker. It's marketed as a speaker. Mm. And then it also True, has yeah. some smart stuff to it. Apple, I don't think True. Apple would even really like like a, like an echo dot i don't think they're interested in doing that mm -hmm. mm. and um well let, let's go let's go ahead and talk about another one uh this one here comes from alex shea whose uh handle is consuming lipids on uh on twitter <laughs> and had some eggnog last night so right. i consume my own lipids <laughs> so uh nice. but basically what he says here is the macbook pro 2015 was the last good macbook and this actually isn't that uncommon of a of an opinion. Mm, um, not at all. Yeah, last year Marco Arendt, who was one of the co-founders of Tumblr, that's very uh, relevant, um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> said that uh, that it was the best laptop ever made, and he said it was the peak of Jobs' vision for the Mac and stuff. I thought that he had a, he had a blog post about it uh, last year, and I thought I like this quote from it. It's designed for us rather than asking us to adopt ourselves to it. The 2015 MacBook Pro. Uh, I mean, you know, it was like that. And, I fully uh, agree with that. I, I wouldn't say it's the last good one. Yes. I think the current Max are good, but they're not great. That mm -hmm. was the last great one. And the Air at that year was the last great Air. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they started going nuts with the keyboard. That's the big thing. And they started the going, they started going, I love USB-C. Mm -hmm. Good, do USB-C. But they started also just completely getting rid of USB-A, which right. the world is not ready for that. Yes. <laughs> And all kinds of it's fine on a 12 inch yeah. MacBook where it's super small and you can't maybe you can't fit it, but mm -hmm. on a MacBook Pro, you know, people's mics and audio decks and all this other stuff are USB A. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Apple everything. Apple has a obviously has a history of dragging us kicking and screaming into a new uh, connectivity future, but it, it, as you guys are saying, whoever wrote that, it's not connected to a product that people want. Right. It's you know mm -hmm. if. The, the MacBook, even if you t even if it had USB A, it's just it's it's just not what it was. Mm -hmm. That touch bar is useless. The yes. keyboard just, just yeah. I, I hate it. You know, it's just not. There's nothing there that is improving on what it was three or four years ago. And in many cases, it's 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 not as good. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you uh, know, one thing that they you know, in an idea of you know, people act like. You know, you know that Apple always takes away and stuff. In the 2015 one, they act that was actually where they ditched the optical drive. Um, you know, mm -hmm. so that was one. You know, but and people were, if you look at the lot of the reviews of the time, they were like the horror. But nowadays, it looks, you know, an optical drive looks so. Well, and frankly, I don't think a lot of people were yeah, using. Yeah, I don't that. think so. Not, not in twenty fifteen. Yes, no. um, <laughs> I think I think this is why it's interesting that that rumor from Bloomberg last year about how they've got this this group within Apple that where they're pulling in outside people to come work at Apple for mm -hmm. a time. Hmm. Uh, I forget what they call it. The, the pro something team or something where something they're like they're watching the way people work and they're what and what they do to mm -hmm. to not only fix software problems but to design their future products and probably the mac the whatever the new mac pro is the is going to be the first real example of that but you know it's i feel like that's been missing from apple to this guy's to, to marco's point of like it's it's been a while since we felt like a product was designed for what we want rather than asking us to do what it wants and that was what was so yeah. beautiful about these devices before is, you know, it was like, especially as writers, I mean, we like to do the most basic things with these. And it was, you know, it was, you sat down and it was exactly what you wanted. And, uh, yeah. you know, you know, that's, you know, one of the reasons why you used to go into a press room and like everybody would have a MacBook Air. Yeah. That is, that's, that's at the heart of the argument about the new iPad Pro, which got so much more expensive and they keep saying is going to replace your computer. And it's like, it kind of does if what's a you, computer <laughs> if you yeah it does if you this are willing to yeah. <laughs> do things their way instead of it doing things your way you know and that's i think that's all part of that problem so yeah I agree with the that last, uh, also the last macbook to have a uh glowing apple logo i was just gonna say that yes and <laughs> yeah. it was, so is that more kind of playful apple those things everything. yeah those the, that, i don't know why they, they got rid of that that was that was the coolest part of the, of the uh, notebook it totally was you yeah. know I, so my opinion as a as a pro user who did a lot of audio a lot of video back when i had a macbook i actually think the very last you know awesome macbook was uh i think it was it was either 2011 to 2012 when they stopped the 17 inch because I had a 17-inch, mm -hmm. 
I could get a matte screen. I swapped yeah. out the DVD drive for a second SSD. I upgraded the RAM. I had replaced the battery. It had an express card slot on it for yeah, up- right, uploading yeah, right. different ports. I had ports also, up the wazoo. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude, but that really thing, heavy, really big, that thing was retina. powerful. That thing was a pro. You want to talk about a pro machine? Mm-hmm. That was mm-hmm. a pro machine. Like right. that. That's back when they cared about pros. And like, it's I think that's nobody, the last I don't truly think great Mac. Buy a seventeen inch. So I, I, I know, but that, but smaller stuff well and but that i mean apple was about the pros the right creative yeah. apple's about Even creative the pros though were buying 15s like I mean, there there were there were people, but just not enough. Not Adam's enough. Like, to I'm a pro. Yeah, so. Well, well, but also, I mean, the the fifteens had a lot of those same things too. I mean, sure, it didn't have the yeah. express card slot, but I mean, everything other than that, you could customize it, you could upgrade it, you could you know change. You you just had so many more options in the configurations and how you wanted to make it your own uh, kind of system. That that I, yeah, I man, I I love that. Lab. I still I, have it. That's I still going I love from the that whole laptop. industry in a lot of ways. <laughs> yeah, right, it's not just you know, Apple. Yeah, everybody's making things so much more tightly integrated, and yeah. it's cutting down on your ability to customize and change and aftermarket upgrade and repair and everything. Sometimes I, mean, I think they this... released, Go ahead. If, if, if they came out with a 17 inch laptop like that one, I mean, people would just laugh. It would be like an inch thick, and you know, <laughs> yeah, oh, but you know, they would buy <laughs> it. Just, it just wouldn't. Know they would I don't know it. how many people know. would. I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> Sometimes I think, you know, this kind of like sidelining of the the Mac, you know, it's almost like, you know, they really want us to believe that the future is going to be like the iPad, you know. And so it's, you know, this is the this is the new computer with the what, what's a, a computer and stuff. So in a, in a lot of ways, to me, it's like the same mindset as, you know, USB-C is the future. Let's force you to switch to that and stuff. So, you know, it's like, look how awesome this iPad Pro is. And meanwhile, the the Mac is getting back there. I remember 2016, you were mentioning Bloomberg last year, but in 2016, you know, they had said that basically the Mac OS team doesn't exist anymore. It was kind of like, they're kind of like shared Hmm. with the iOS team. And I don't know, Mm -hmm. you know, if that's still the case, but I remember that was big news at the time. I mean, this just fits into Apple's uh, MO is, you know, it's just like, hey, we we are now a more general consumer-based thing. What does the general populace of consumers care about? They, maybe they don't even care about ports. Maybe they could be a MacBook yeah. that has zero ports because you know a, a huge majority need, of consumers one, don't have anything. <laughs> we, yeah. we hear a lot of you stuff charge about charge it. Exactly, well, inductive charging. Just put it on a pad. You don't even need a port, well, and no then pad, you become waterproof, man. Hours. A waterproof laptop. <laughs> We, we hear a lot of stuff about the video in here, but I also know as far as pro stuff, some of the most dedicated Mac users I know are usually coders. And, uh, oh, yeah. you know, and I, I know a lot of them are just infuriated by the touch bar because, you know, they, they use the escape mm-hmm. so much. I always yeah. point out that you can just, which is yeah, what I do, back, yeah. where you just put it all with the function keys. But still, the very fact that you have to do that. Yeah, I actually yeah, keep you my can't touch bar function. You can't do it without looking down. It's not yeah, good. It, it's it's weird. Yes. And as, you know, when you bring up coding, you still you know you don't have Xcode on the iPad, which is crazy. Yes. Really crazy. Oh. That seems yeah. weird. Isn't that crazy? That that's, seems like an oversight. Yeah. That's yeah. really stupid. Okay. It's 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 no longer an oversight. It's been it's been friggin' eight years. I mean, yeah. they, this is what they've decided to not give. Uh, code. I don't know why. Oh, because I mean, developers yeah. can't use an iPad as their main coding device. Yeah, and they they so, have uh, full fledged photo and video editing apps, but yeah, not not uh, even audio. Yeah, that seems mm-hmm. like a weird market to <laughs> miss. Out. I've heard people say that like I'm too hard on the iPad Pro and stuff, but if it's a Pro device, you know, you you're gonna put that word on it. You you should totally include these things. Yeah, yeah a lot of this stuff is completely forgivable in the 329 iPad. Yes. Hmm. But totally. When yeah. you're you're making a device that can cost much more than a MacBook and stuff, you know, it's yeah. it needs to be yeah. as good at least. Yes, and deliver the same options. And uh so we can all say that Johnny Ive, he's probably to blame for a lot of this. Mm. So here comes a hot take from George Rawls, whose uh, handle is G Rawls, and he says, When we look back on Apple's phenomenal handheld Fueled run, Johnny Ives' hardware design choices will be blamed for the fall from the top. Hard to hold phones and tablets, no earphone jacks, laptops with only one connector type, beautiful de- desktop boxes, stuff with insufficient hardware. Yes. Uh, all of that, I'm not I think so sure this is really hard Johnny to hold. Ive, but yes. I think that's blaming Johnny Ive for Yeah, I don't think he makes every the, single decision. Yes. Yeah, well, and some of the things like, like the hardware inside a desktop thing like i don't know the degree to which that's his 
choice yes. <laughs> or or made necessary by his design decisions or something. So I I think as as frustrated as you can get by some of these things, I don't think anyone out there is necessarily doing a better job with design right. than Apple. Speaking Certainly of which, I really want to talking. know how the iPhone or the um, iPad is hard to hold. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't get that. Yeah, but the, the twelve, the twelve point nine inch iPad, it's a little big. But the, <laughs> it's definitely an improvement with the, you know, because the the screen yeah. stayed, the display stayed the same, but the yeah. overall form All factor went down. I mean, I, I I've been testing um the Pixel Slate. Yeah. And 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 the uh, uh the HP Chromebook X2, both of which have 12.3 inch displays, mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. bigger than the iPad Pro. And you know, I, I I have the same issues. Like it's just, it's not the design's fault. It's that it's a 12 inch screen that you're trying to hold and use. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But as you say, the iPad is nicer, is smaller bezels, and they, it's about as as thin and as light and as comfortable as you're gonna get mm -hmm. for a screen that size. Definitely. Yeah, and, I think and hey, like man, most Android phones jacks. don't have headphone jacks anymore either. I'm so sick of Apple of Apple taking all the the shouldering all the blame here. Yes. Well, I think like, the argument is they that started yeah, Apple made that popular. And well, but it is the future. I agree. I have to agree. It is it, actually and the, the Android worse because they're they're following <laughs> the, the a leader that nobody yeah. wants apparently. That's not yeah. the case. People are fine with it. Yeah. Well, yeah, with once, it. once again, the general consumer out there is fine with it, but that that doesn't mean everybody's. Fine Only time I use a wired headset. Anymore, it's with my gaming one at home, and that's just because it makes it more convenient. The but, only thing I'm bummed about is that they took away the adapter. Yeah, that's, either yeah, don't offer at least it at all, not giving or, you the adapter in the box yeah, anymore. That's just that's cheap. Yeah. yeah, that's just cheap. <laughs> Once they decided to offer it with the iPhone 7, then they, they leave it in there, man, or don't give it to us at all. But don't yeah. give and then take it away when you charge more for with with the uh, third whatever it is four <laughs> generate three generations later. But I think, I think I think I think a lot of the complaint is not that Johnny Ives making bad design decisions. It's that they're being copied poorly by the industry that's at the, large that's a good and one, yeah. giving us bad experiences on other devices uh, because they're not copied well, like that, like everyone's messing up the notch. <laughs> yes, totally. Oh, yeah, yeah, that new one we saw from Samsung yesterday. That was interesting. Yeah, they have a new. Yeah, well, that's and... no, don't take any stock in that. That's a prototype just to <laughs> yeah. show off five G. Yeah, uh, that's not going to release. Don't worry about it. So here, here's one thing that I I would like to know what you guys think is, uh, you know, I think a lot of people see that the way Johnny Ive worked with Steve Jobs, it was almost like a John Lennon and Paul McCartney kind of thing. Where, totally. You know, Absolutely. separate they were. You know, they were kind of meh, but together they were an amazing team. I don't know if they were meh separately, but all right, yeah. Paul McCartney and John. John Lennon have some damn good songs in their solo albums. Yeah, but you know, it's you know. <laughs> but they weren't the Beatles. Yeah, I don't know. Well, sure, but they were good. There's some good stuff there, and I How think John has Mumbai done some good Moondelight. stuff too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. Since since Steve Jobs has died, the Apple Watch is is great. The iPhone 10 is a great looking phone. Yes. Yeah, I can't AirPods. imagine that Steve Jobs would have. Yeah, AirPods. I mean, Johnny Ive has done great work without Steve Jobs. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm looking very. I'm very much looking forward. Just to like this Wings. Thing, but what the look great the way apple stuff looks great and make everybody and else happy it, yeah. is it but make but make people happy about its connectivity expandability you know, all that <laughs> stuff fake news uh, yeah that's a big that's a that's that's gonna really set the tone for i don't know how many iterations but People are, they I mean, there's a lot riding on the Mac Pro, I and mean, whether Apple realizes it or not, I'm assuming they do. Yes. Yeah, they I don't. don't think it's going to sell is a big deal. huge numbers. No, but it's not, it but it, it, the... it's indicative of, of what Apple, how Apple feels about its customer professional base. Yeah. Wait, oh, wait, and hold, hold on, they do? <laughs> hold on, that's wait, new hold on. That... Hold on, we just kept saying that they don't care about what the pros think, and then now we're also say saying that. that he didn't that. say that. He's no, making no, a big say that. He didn't say that. Yeah. yeah, well, they're making all these decisions, you know, to say, hey, you know, the 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 general mass market audience is is who we should, you know, cater towards. Hey, if if only ten percent of the people use a headphone jack, then it's okay to get rid of it, right? And and so if only ten percent of the people who compute are going to use a Mac Pro, then why would they care and like spend well, that, all the time that, and money to that do may it? May be true, but they've already said they're doing it. Well, but that doesn't matter. Well, we'll, we'll <laughs> like they already out, said man. they were going to do the charging pad. They even showed it off, they're trying. and then it never comes they're out. Trying. <laughs> so I think they're trying. It just that up. blew up and yeah. testing. I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying, just because they said they're going to do it, doesn't mean they're going to do it. 
Yeah, that that wasn't characteristic of them to announce something before it was fully ready. I think that that <laughs> was. Right. If, if the Mac Pro doesn't release, Tim it, Cook should be fired. <laughs> get, get, yes. Guess what? It's not that hard to make a new Mac Pro. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, like what? Like really? Is it that hard that they've it's, been it's talking about it, it for years Apple and years yeah, it's, and years? It's hard to not just make it a, a just like a PC. It has it's to not be gonna beautiful. Be just, uh, it's, to, it's, yes. it's it's. I mean, it's going to be an Apple, an, an, an Apple version of whatever Dell makes. And no, that's not uh, the, something the, you do overnight. The people that I know who want Mac Pros would no, just, just be happy, <laughs> just be happy to put them in the old Mac Pro like towers, the, the, the yeah, silver sure, ones that we have all do, over here. They're not going to uh, do the big silver cheese graters. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. All, all the people who I know who want Mac Pros, video professionals, audio professionals, they would be happy if they just stuck new guts in those old designs they don't care about the designs they just care about the power they care about the functionality they care about the expandability like mm-hmm. that that's what pros want so it's not that hard to just do it well I, I, even so i think you're you're undermining the work that it takes to put 2019 parts into a 29 uh, box no I mean, it, it's not <laughs> what? No, that that box could you know without much change could do it but they don't yeah, want to do it they don't want to do this giant aluminum thing and mm-hmm. um so, yeah, it'll be interesting. I think it's also their chance to to set a design language for the Mac mm-hmm. that we haven't had a new one in a really long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so just the same way that iPhone 10 is setting a design language for all of iOS that we see in the iPad Pro, we see in this year's devices. You know, I think the Mac needs a new design language. It hasn't had one in many years. Maybe the Mac Pro yeah. is our first hint at that. And then we see MacBooks that carry through those visual cues and colors and whatever they do. You know, I think this the stain, this aluminum slab of stuff that they have now with the edges tapered and the flat sides is that like that's that's been done for so many years. It's time for something else. I mean, I think we got a little bit of a peek at it with the iPad Pro, the way they have those flat edges and, you know, Mm -hmm. the, the, the speaker grills and the way they did that. That could carry over to the Mac Pro and then essentially the MacBook and the iPhone yeah. and everything else. Yeah, whatever the new Apple display yeah. is. Although I, I, I have a feeling the Apple display is just going to be like <laughs> the IMAX display, but yeah. without the whole computer in there. Just like could be. Yeah, I mean, that, there's, I, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a great display. No, it's a great display. Yeah. Yeah, R- Rafalco think, says they want an Apple... iMac without a three-inch bezel. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I can do it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I was I mean, actually. I think, I think we all want that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And uh, um, oh, I will say that one thing I'm worried about with Johnny Ive is, uh, you know, that he doesn't just handle the hardware now. He's also, you know, Cook also put him on with software and everything. He's got a lot to do. He had a, you know, hand in designing Apple Park. He, you know, and th- this guy over here wants to make him into CEO. I sometimes worry he's getting burned out. Uh, that's a lot of stuff he, to do. He does a lot. Yeah, I don't yeah. know how much that that human interface design a title. I think that might have been tweaked, or or I'm, I'm not sure how much of a of a. Of a but back in iPhone um, iOS seven, he had more of a hand in it, and I'm not so sure anymore. I think there was a report recently that he's kind of scaled that back, but he is doing a lot. Yes, for sure. Mm-hmm. But I, you know, it's not again. He's not one guy. He has a whole team of people that are that are working on this stuff. Yeah, things are being delegated. Yeah, Some that's like saying Tim approved. Cook has a lot to do because Apple has twenty different products. I mean, there's a team that works underneath Johnny Ive. No, he's there designing them all. He's got AutoCAD open on his desktop, <laughs> and he's even so. You know, that's what we we're talking about. There, that it's greatly expanded its product line. That's a that's a lot of stuff to handle compared to what it used to be. And you know, yeah. and that was back. You know, when you had the original iMac and stuff, where it was like, ooh, wow. You know, to me, I think that's one reason why people think we're not seeing all these grand designs and stuff. It's just like you don't have a lot of time to think about it. Maybe I don't know. It's you know, even- I, again, the iPhone 10 is is awesome. The new Apple Watch is awesome. Like mm-hmm. AirPods are awesome. Like mm-hmm. Apple is not doing nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, despite putting a, a you know, a, throwing the 25th, the, whatever it is, the, the, the 2009 Mac Pro out again. Yeah. You, I think, you can't I think have, Apple, Apple's doing great stuff. You can't I, have a dramatic change that changes the whole world like every year. Yeah. Every, right. That's what people keep Or even demanding. every five years, yeah. yeah. You know. How, I mean, what what was the time? The, 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 we, there was that period where it was the iPod, iPhone, iPad. And mm-hmm. that's what mm-hmm. everyone's looking at. Why can't they do that again? Because they're just not. It's well, just, it doesn't just come that, that simple. <laughs> and that and I still long, say that the, the Apple Watch is underrated for its. And that was a big, is. yeah, that was a period of time that's longer than people think it, it was. It was uh, 2001 yeah. to 2010 when yeah. the iPad came. 
Yeah. Right. I mean, we've got Apple Watch, AirPods, you know. Home po- HomePod. I liked the design of the HomePod. Yeah, it's a beautiful device. I think it looks device. nice. Yeah. It looks yeah. nice. That's, yeah, not, it's not that's not revolutionary, not... but it's nice. Yeah, exactly. Everyone else is making smart speakers. It's not like it's... That's what they wanted. Yeah, that, that was and let's face it, the, the iPad was just a big iPhone. Anyway, See, that's what I just said. Out. Yeah, because y'all you, were acting like this is some like new device. It's just a big iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of uh, weird divine design choices that might change the world, uh, here is another take from Simon Blackburn, whose Ooh. handle is Precise Path. The hype be- behind Samsung foldables will crash and burn before Apple ever releases one. Apple will continue to put R&D into this product space only to conclude that it is a stupid concept. Is there hype? I, I, no, I, I don't I feel told. like I know too many no, people who are like yeah, excited sure. about it. No. I, I, nobody was real. I think they were build, excited to see it, but when they saw yeah, it, it was like Man. it'll build once they uh, Samsung actually has a product to show. But there's definitely pent up interest in folding. It's something, folding and a lot of other companies keep talking about. They're yeah. making yeah. It folding. Huawei, way. LG, they're, they're they're out there. You know, you, you see it on like TV shows, like like Westworld, Westworld. all the time, mm-hmm. and they, like people, if that at that type of thing came out, there would be tons of hype. Yeah, mm-hmm. but Westworld I don't is the only one that's really that. managed to make it look cool, in my opinion. Yeah, oh, yeah I think, I think, uh, yeah. There's the, people don't think of all the compromises you have to do to do a folding phone. Oh, how thick it has to be. You oh, have yeah. to split the battery. Oh, it's yeah. hard to make it durable. The it's hard to make it the work. Interface, it's to, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you have to. Uh, where do you put the camera? Do you put the camera so that when you unfold it, it faces out, or do you have it so it's folded? You have to have a screen on that side. So you can, I mean, just a million. Which, which way is it folding, inward or outward? You know, that's, yeah. yeah. I yeah, mean, I, I don't disagree with that. I do think that the first one's going to be laughably bad, uh-huh. as we've seen before from <clears throat> Samsung. But um, <laughs> I say the first couple of and them. And you had that Royal. Not just yeah. the first one. Yeah. Royal. <laughs> I mean, this, yeah. this could They're be something suck. that we, we might never see a folding iPhone. It depends on, you know, A, the, the, the feasibility of it, but also whether or not it adds any value to the iPhone, whether or not it's something that we're going to use on a regular basis. Yeah, my issue keep is going that if you take phones. an iPad yeah. and, and you fold an iPad in half, that's too big to be a phone. It's yeah, and it's going right. to be too thick to put in your pocket. Yeah. 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 Or just to even hold up to your hand. It's like so, half yeah, of an iPad is too big. B- if based you on the phone and you double the phone, that's too small to be a reasonable tablet. And that's like, what people are looking at. It's like four inches to eight inches. And that, yeah, that's what's the not point? Really we have, we have a you... six and a half inch iPhone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just, just... So we're talking about an inch, an inch, two inches at the most that we're gaining. Mm-hmm. And as Jason said before, all of those problems that come with it. Yeah. The least of which is durability. Yeah. 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 I, th- I, think, I think, oh boy. So I it's think, hard. yeah, the, the <laughs> phone, it's going to fizzle out. I think there is a yeah. lot of potential value to uh, something like a surface that grows into an even bigger surface, mm-hmm. like a tablet that become, goes from a smaller size tablet to a giant tablet. Mm-hmm. The Westworld thing, to your, yeah. to your example. I mean, it's not going to be incredible like the Westworld things because those are fake, right. but yeah. <laughs> that kind of thing, it seems to make a little more sense to me where you're you're not trying to completely change use cases. You're just going from a smaller tablet to a mm-hmm. much, much larger tablet if you want to do media consumption or you know some big art thing versus reading Twitter or doing a productivity thing. So I can, I can see a tablet styled and Microsoft there's rumors all the time about Microsoft doing a surface that's like that. Mm. You know, that's the kind of thing that maybe five years from now there's folding tablets. I can, I could, I could see that. Yeah. Or like roll out something, you know, there's a lot yeah. of display tech out there that that's cool and perhaps practical, but, and I'm, I'm but sure Apple phone. is, is working on it, but yeah, I think ultimately the folding phone just doesn't I mean it's it doesn't add, it's like add 3D enough. tv it's like the touch bar yeah, yeah. it's a very expensive <laughs> <laughs> risky game everybody gimmick. was doing 3d phones for about a year hey for the red hydrogen year. one yeah. just came out yeah <laughs> 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 nobody cares right oh boy uh i i believe it, it was interesting yesterday a south korean paper called the bell um said that maybe it, that it is probably going to be positioned more of a limited edition thing targeted yeah, oh, no no doubt yeah, middle-aged professionals, you know, basically the the BlackBerry <laughs> crowd. And hey, hey, I like my BlackBerry uh, key too, okay? The Bell, the bell uh, for what it's worth, is is generally crazy accurate with Samsung stuff. They're they're real plugged into the Korean market. So yeah. I, I believe that mm-hmm. I, it'll absolutely be limited. It's going to be like like 
eighteen to two hundred to uh, to, to two thousand dollars. They're not. It's not going to be a mass market device. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if it's you know nearly impossible to get, even if you want one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, I will say I, I do miss uh, hanging up on people by closing. Oh, the, 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 the clamshell, yeah, totally. You know, yeah, that was so satisfying. That's the only reason why I'd ever want one. But yeah, and then you and then you, and then you crack you your crack display the display. You two, two <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah. you know, about the Apple innovation thing. I, you know, I think people forget sometimes that Apple often its innovation isn't about whoa look at this really brand new product it's about taking ideas that are already out there sure. and you know simplifying them making more usable than we ever thought i mean because you know like before the iphone there were things like palms and stuff like that i mean you know it sure. had predecessors yep. Yep. but apple made it amazing you know it was something that you know felt like we jumped 20 years in the future I'm yeah not saying i mean even something is you know yeah, well, Siri is another thing. I mean, you're right. They didn't invent it, but they really took it to a new level, and exactly. then they just forgot they about it. They dropped the ball. Yeah. <laughs> Touch ID, all these things. Like, there's yeah, so many or Face th- ID <laughs> recently. Like, that's that's a million. No one has that. replicated. Not, no, uh, Huawei just came out with a phone yeah. that does 3D. Sensing. But there's just a million examples of Apple wasn't first. Apple yes. just did it good enough to satisfy hundreds of millions of people. Totally. And be manufacturable <laughs> hundreds of millions of times. There's a lot of things out there that are cool, mm-hmm. but they could never make a hundred million a year of them. Yes, right. and yeah, and I, I will say that I, I think, especially because you know, I used to be on the older, you know, the iPhones, the the seven and stuff. But I think Face ID is a lot more amazing than people give it credit it for. It is. It really is. I mean, yeah, I I've I used... can't understand why it's not on the laptops. I just yes. don't get it. Oh my god, it's so weird. I agree. <laughs> it's it's tailor made for your MacBook. Yes, you're always is. looking right at that camera when you open it. It would be it would be perfect. Yeah. And that is I, why I, it's so nice on the iPad Pro. Yeah. yeah, this much I assume, thicker or something. I assume I next year it will be. But it has geez. to be next year. Because it works yeah. so well, and I because you know before I used to really hate using that iPad Pro because I had to hit that button all the time. But no, sure. since you're always facing it, you know it's it's it makes it easy to open it. That's I like, think it requires a slightly thicker lid, mm-hmm. and I think that's not going to come until whenever they redesign design it. Maybe so, yeah. Whatever a new MacBook design refresh is, so that might be next year, and maybe the year after that. I just it's just not very. They're not taking any risks with the Mac line mm-hmm. at all. Yeah. I would say that I think, you know, with as far as the foldable stuff goes, you know, Apple's, you know, real advantage here is that, you know, unlike Samsung, it can really directly, you know, do the integration of the software and hardware. So anything that they, you know, because Samsung is working with Google, but, you know, Apple, it really yeah. is just all inside in-house. So, totally. you know, that, that could be one thing to look forward to. But I... And we see... As I uh, as we see with the Pixel, you know, which is Google, one hundred percent, and that has tons of issues. Apple is it's it's they they don't get enough credit for how rock solid they make their ecosystem and how quickly they push out fixes. Yesterday, mm-hmm. we just got a fix for major major problems on the Pixel Three, like major ones. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yesterday, that's two months after the phone released. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that would have been a, that would have been the next week. That on, would have been five, seven days for Apple. I mean, right. these are like I'm talking about I had to restart my phone for the camera to work last week oh. because it just <laughs> stopped working a couple times. So yeah. that, you know, Apple, Apple deserves all the credit in the world. And for to do that really at, kind of pivoting at, quickly at, you know, 40 or 50 times the scale of the pixel. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. I think it's I think that might be underestimating the scale. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the, yeah, it's 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 crazy what what Apple is. You know, people just take it for granted. Yeah, and it, it goes back to what I was saying about them being the punching bag when all this is going on because you know sometimes you got to wait like four days yeah. as opposed to. They two should months. be. They're the biggest. They should yeah. be. Yeah, yes. been, that that comes with the territory. Yes, it does. But they also should get credit for the good things they do. Mm-hmm. And uh, speaking of good things, uh, you might be interested that right now, I, I thought it was uh, that R&R uh, Auctions is, uh, you know, they're going to have an auction for the first issue of Macworld that was actually signed by Steve Jobs. And uh, that's going to be February 84. Yeah, February 1984. <laughs> Ironically, both are dead. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we, we're still around too in soon, new form. Too yes. soon. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I think that's uh, – that's, uh, so Jobs, you know, famously rarely ever signed anything. And there's a video on there that I really? included no. in the post that, uh, yeah, where he was making a joke that he wasn't going to sign it, but the guy was in a wheelchair. Uh, uh, so, so, yeah. And, he, now, he got and now it's being sold. Yes. Yeah, it's being auctioned off. I think starting next week, next it's like week. a week long 
silent auction type deal. Huh. Yeah. They expect it to go for they, the the auction house company says that they expect it'll probably go for around ten thousand dollars. Yes. So I, don't, I you know if you want a piece of Apple history and, and Macworld Apple history. history do, do you yeah. think they'll give us a discount if we bid on it? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, actually, it's ours. Just, right? You can just give it back to us. Thanks. <laughs> and it, you know, there's a, also a business card, Steve Jobs, I'm signed, that is supposed to go for around $500. And, uh, mm. But it has the old rainbow logo on it. It says chairman of the board. So that's really cool. Huh. And, um, yeah. but, Are they going to uh, auction off the, the handicapped parking space they used to park in? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I saw that. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh, and if you read our post, I'm you can kidding, read. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm well, kidding. I'm not kidding because he was a. Uh, yeah, I because that famous story, photo, yeah, yeah um, on the first issue of MacWorld, yeah, he he flipped off the photographer when he uh, <laughs> when he took that photo, and you know, <laughs> just classic Steve Jobs there. So, uh, so you can read a little bit about more with that. Roman wrote an article a couple of years ago that I linked in there that tells the whole story. <laughs> and uh, so another interesting t- t- bit that Jobs actually called and said he didn't want to be on the cover, but uh, yeah. our publisher said, uh, "Sorry, it already went to press," which was a total <laughs> lie. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we have that, that first that's, that's issue. Nice. <laughs> so, but uh, just uh, do we have any more hot takes on the in the chat? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, Cruz and Reed thinks they uh, they fear um, harming the iPad sales by putting Face ID in the laptops. That was just from our previous talk. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I don't know if anyone's yeah, buying the iPad specifically for that. Uh, the, yeah, I don't yeah. Necessarily think so. They also Plus, think they want to sell uh, Macs. It would be they a make best. a lot of money selling Macs. Yeah, it so would nice. be a, just a bonus for Mac buyers. Yeah. Uh, that and they, they also think that the um, the the foldable thing could be like a wearable device that then folds into a phone that makes it easier to kind of not have it in your pocket. Mm-hmm. I guess that's fascinating. Uh, yeah, I don't know how interesting. It'd be pretty thick. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> there's a lot of engineering issues that I see there that yeah. seem insurmountable to me. But and it would be super cool. But yeah. Oh, and weird. There's people in the chat like DC one four seven that says I would adore a big tower Mac Pro. Weird, huh? Well, yeah, there's a lot of people in chat that are. Yeah. I'm not saying that. Weird. None yeah. of us are huh. saying they should or won't be making that. Huh? Well, yeah. Weird. We'll see. All right. Well, you know. <laughs> are you not listening to us? <laughs> yeah, I don't think he is. I, 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 he just wants to hate on Apple. No, I'm, I I'm, I'm, I'm listening to you, but also, if that's what they were making, then it wouldn't have taken this long no, to well, make that. Yeah. No. Yeah. Why? I don't think that's. I don't it's think that's look true. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> the last, the last Mac Pro they made was that crazy circle tra- trash can. They have to go start from from zero and yes. redesign the whole thing. Uh huh. You saw yep. how crazy they went on that, uh-huh. so they're gonna go crazy on this one. But hopefully, it'll be a more useful crazy this time. Well. And that goes counterintuitive to over designing something. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. my point. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, speaking to a nicely designed device, uh, once a, re- a reminder that we are giving away an 11 inch iPad Pro, yes. and you can just go to our site and yes. just sign up for that. Uh, we're teaming up with AnyTrans software, data management, and uh, migration tool to give that away. And you have a week left. Uh, we, you know, next podcast Wednesday, we will announce the winner, and the contest ends about an hour before that. So sign up for that. Uh, but uh, once again, this is the MacWorld Podcast episode 632. I'd like to thank uh, Michael Simon. I'd like to thank Jason Cross, and thank. Thank the you. temporary man, uh, most important man in the room, addict Patrick Murray. You won't, you won't see me back. Yes, <laughs> go back to your Android devices, man. <laughs> and uh, so, thanks again, and we will see you next week. See ya. <laughs>